<laughs> what was that? That was diet root beer. <laughs> diet root beer. Excuse me. Welcome to Keto on the Couch from Jonathan Dickinson State Park. This is episode 78. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 100 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we usually sit down we on, sit on a something. bench where we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to yeah. it. Yeah. 12,000 subscribers. Wow. I am so excited. Thank you guys. You Thank made this you happen. so much. Yes, the only reason we have 12,000 subscribers is you. because of you guys. Because you guys share our videos, because you like them, you hit the com you leave comments down below. Yeah. And one of the most important thing is the fact that you guys hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time we upload a new video because that's what YouTube really likes and the more that you guys are sharing us, the faster we can grow, and the faster we can grow, the more lives that we can change. Well, we got excited because we started to get notifications that there were comments on really old videos. Yes. And I got so excited because it's new to somebody. Right. There's something that maybe there's a favorite episode or a favorite recipe, and you're like, well, that was a long time ago. Everybody's made Joe's yogurt. Everybody's made Joe's cheese crackers. Everybody's made the flax crackers. No, share it. It's new to somebody. Somebody right. is just getting started on keto and maybe we can help them. That's right. Can I get so excited about one new viewer that we have? Okay. Our mail carrier, Ricardo. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> I got so excited. I was on my way out the door um, this past week and delivering the mail was our amazing mail carrier and he was delivering the keto crates. Right. And he goes, who in this house is keto? And I was like, me and my husband and he's like i'm keto too and we That's just so awesome we just started talking and it was so exciting to just talk to like a new person and talk about keto and one of the things that we were both like just overwhelmed with and i feel like i get nerdy about it but it's so true is how we have been doing the same activities. He's it's been hot here. He's been a mail carrier for years, and yet he has so much more energy than he ever did years before. Right. That it is like exciting. And it's the same thing. Like I'm feeling while we're camping, we've kayaked before, I've ridden a bicycle before, I've gone on a hike before, but I have so much more energy for these activities that <laughs> it just is exciting. I mean, it's such a non scale victory. Yeah. But what are you doing? that you've always done that all of a sudden since keto you have way more energy for. Yeah, let us know down in the comment section. We were up past 12.30 last night. Yeah. Part of it's because it was pouring. It was pouring. So let's talk about our trip right now. So um, we are right now at Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Hope it is sounds. currently Lower Sunday. That. We were supposed to be going to an Army Corps of Engineers Park on Monday and we were gonna camp Monday night and Tuesday night and come home on Wednesday. And I found this incredible website. Check it if out. If you're a camper, because it's good all over the country, it's called Wandering Labs. I'm gonna leave a link down below. And it's a free website, although you can throw the guy like 10 or 20 bucks. Totally worth it. And the, the throwing him 10 or 20 bucks is kind of like, hey, thanks for creating this incredible, incredible thing. It's brilliant. But it gives you some other things, like it searches more and also sends you text messages. But what it does is it searches all, whatever campsite, say whatever campsite you want. Let's say you want to go to Yellowstone National Park. You type it in there. You can even be specific to what campsite you want. Like you, I want site number 153. You can put everything in there and then it will constantly just check and check and check. And as soon as there's availability, it'll send you a text message or an email and say, hey, there's an opening. And then you could jump on and get it. So we all of a sudden got a message saying there was an opening for this campground, which was completely filled up. But people changed their plans. Obviously, we just opened up a slot on Monday uh, right. for some family. Right. So we threw everything together and then 
we filmed a couple of things for church on Friday and we needed to do the keto crate video and we got up Saturday morning. We couldn't check in here till three anyway. When you want something bad enough, you will just get it done. Yeah. So we got up in the morning. I went and got food for the camping trip. We got ice. I packed up the trailer. We were on the road by 12 o'clock. We got up here at like one o'clock. They let us in early. We were great. And then we set everything up all, I know it's a long story, without eating. eating. That was just not a thing. I think about when all we had to set up was a tent mm -hmm. before and how it was like you had to have meals in between the setup. Yes. The meal before the setup. This annoys me. See these little circles? We need to modify this tent so that I don't see those circles in our video. Why? I don't know. It just annoys me. They're like ladybug spots. <laughs> I like polka dots. But yeah, we, Back did, to your food. we didn't need any food and then okay well this blows my mind after we were done setting up we went on seven mile bicycle ride hello we Still did not eat eaten. until 8 30 i think it was 8 30 right 8 30 last night and oh by the way it was a hundred degrees yesterday the one thing that joe said while we were on our bike ride is like how have we not been doing this like our entire marriage right. like this was this is such a good investment and it's an hour away i mean check the surrounding areas not for for restaurants or or for places to shop but just check around is there like a nature something within an hour of your house that you could check out because it really is relaxing and more than just the relaxing and you can do it what we're finding as we've got all of this energy to start doing this again and hey camping's not for everybody we understand that but getting out and doing something because it distracts you from your day-to-day -day thinking about food. Yeah. When we're at home, I'm thinking about food. Now, we're pretty good about it, but I still will occasionally. It's a thought. I'm going to grab a piece of cheese on the way past the refrigerator. I'm going to grab a pack of schoolyard snacks. I'm going to grab a couple strips of pre-cooked bacon or something. But when you get out of the house... The food kind of leaves your mind and you don't think about it. Well, how can and it's like you a with whole different so much focus. beauty? Right. I've, got, I've got water to look at and I've got plants to see and I've got animals to discover. I mean, we spent 10 minutes yesterday trying to figure out what animal was rustling in a particular tree. Yeah. I mean, you feel like a kid. Yep. And I think that, you know, we were heavy for so long that it has absolutely taken us a couple of years to work out the... I can't go outside and like be in nature because it's going to be hot. I'm going to be sweaty. I'm going to be miserable. It's not going to be fun because it used to be so unpleasant before. It right. really did. I mean, we would go out even to an amusement park we loved and I used to get the terrible like red um, swelling heat and rash. It, heat rash in my legs along my sock line. I mean, you would always be chafed because of ever, all of your walking and, and so you were like, well, I don't want to go outside because I'm not an outdoor person because I can't be. Right. And all of these other people that are enjoying nature, I must just be built differently. No, it's just a case of we were miserable and unhealthy and heavy. And it was, it was uncomfortable then, but it is no longer as uncomfortable as it was. So enjoy that. That is truly a non-scale victory because we realize we've been robbed of something so beautiful that's only an hour away from us. Right. Keto chow. Flavor of the week. I perfect timing. I feel like this was for me. It is pumpkin um, spice. Pumpkin spice, ten percent off. Link down below. If you use that link, you get another ten percent off, which is insane. So you get ten percent off, this and then the another ten percent off. This is the perfect but, yep, season. It, they've turned it into a seasonal flavor, so they've brought it back. Um, also, we mentioned it in our quick live stream when we were coming up camping. Another deal that we found was. Um, Lily's, Lily's peanut butter cups. If you have a BJ's near you, I don't know how long this is going Sometimes to be on. Sometimes they'll let you have a day trip yeah. to shop. Go but and ask them if you don't have a BJ's membership, can I shop here for the day? They're carrying their peanut butter cups and Joe had actually told us about this, Joe from Pembroke Pines. And uh, I went in there and I couldn't find the coupon. I'm like, yeah, I don't, well, I'm gonna get one bag for our camping trip just to kind of treat us a little bit. From Pembroke Pines is actually his middle name. It's weird, <laughs> just kidding. 
and uh, it rings up at $3 off. So no coupon. It just says coupon, but it's a clipless coupon. It's just like automatically applies. So if you have a BJ's and you like the Lily's I chocolate peanut butter cups, love that. You go know, get them there. You know what I hate? Mail-in rebates. Yes. So I Do you bought, ever mail in that mail-in rebate? No, it's in the truck. I bought new tires for my truck last week, and there's a $75 mail-in rebate. Which is a lot. And they won't let you submit it online. Why? And I don't know. Is so anybody I keep accepting mail right now? In the mail. <laughs> you want to get into the comments and stuff? Yes, please. Let's take a quick commercial break, and then we'll come back with our what is that called now? Keto, Keto College. College. And we're back. I didn't even get a drink. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, so this is okay. the part of Keto on the Couch where we like to highlight you guys, our subscribers. Yeah. And so if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, please go join it because there's lots of people in there who love to encourage you, who are going to share recipes, deals. Just be your friend and the person that you can do this with. Yeah. Also, make sure you're leaving comments because that's what we're going to do. We're going to read comments and stuff. Now, we have three different sections here if you're new to our channel. We first have a section called Keto College where somebody just put up like a post that we find very inspiring. Then we highlight a couple of success stories. And then finally, we get into comments from the last week's Keto on the Coach as well as some of our Facebook posts. Because it's all about you. It's all about you. So this week's Keto College adjunct professor is that what we're calling him? i love that yes is from wendy hey wendy and wendy wrote i am so happy i've been sending info and videos to a type 1 diabetic friend of mine for a couple of years he kept saying i can't do that he just messaged me and said he's been doing extremely low carb for three weeks and has only used his humalog three times wow wendy, that is oh awesome thank you and thank you wendy for sharing and continuing to just talk about it and that's why I find this so inspiring because people ask us all the time, well, how do I get my husband? How do I get my wife? How do I get my brother? How do I get my mother? How do I get so-and-so to the life join and start doing keto? In front of them. Mm -hmm. Have success. And don't hound them. Don't preach. Just live it out. Let yeah. let let your life be the testimony. And when you have good success, they're going to ask you. You it, won't even have to tell them. It may take a month. It may two, take two months. It may take six months. It may take three years, yeah. but they will see a change. And if they care at all about their health, they're going to eventually change. Sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes, hey, let's face it. We're all addicts. And, and I don't know about you guys, the amount of diets and exercise plans that I have tried over my life, I'm sure most of my friends and, and my family were like, this is just, just another They're just waiting fad. it out. You know, they're going to do this for a month and then they're going to quit. So sometimes they want to see, are they going to stick to it for six months, a year, two years before they're willing to join in? Yeah, I feel like it's like we're at the three year mark. And I, I feel like with some people, we're just now getting like, you know, props from people that we've known for years because they really have watched our lives and think, well, this is just like, you know, it's got a short expiration date on it. And so then when they're like, no, you've just sustained good health for a long period of time. That's when they notice. Yep. So subscribers of the weeks. So this week we actually have two. One of them's long time subscriber, very like active in our Facebook family group, always encouraging people. It's Jason, also hey, known as Viva Viva J. J. And he shared a little photo and I just love this photo. So he said, photo on the left was back in 2017 before I reached my largest weight. And fortunately, most of my body was hidden underneath of the water. I'm guessing photos show up the rest of me were deleted and never shown on social media. That's Been how there. I did it. I kind of wish I had those now to compare how I am today. Yesterday, I finally cleaned out my closet and drawers and had six garbage bags filled wow. with clothes that I no longer wear and are going to donate to Goodwill. I had a couple of three extra large, uh, three XL shirts and pants sizes as high as 48 waist. I got rid of everything with large and above and now wear mainly small to medium sizes with pants between 30 to 32. Keto has given me a Amazing. second chance at life, and I have the tools to stay in shape the rest of my life and don't ever plan on going down that hole again and destroy my health as well. Wow. Thank you, Jason, for sharing that. And it's really incredible, like, the, the difference between the pictures. I love that he's having fun, though, in the, in the water picture, though. I love that. That's, yeah. like, that's Vivid J's personality. 
Um, but I like what he says that he wishes that he had pictures from before. So if you are new to keto and this is the beginning of your progress and you're like, Hey, I don't take pictures of myself. I'm going to wait take until, pictures. you know, I get this weight off or I get a certain size. Then I'll start taking pictures. Don't do that every month. It's for future you. Yeah. Future you will need to reflect on these yeah. again. I wish I had pictures of me along my journey. I barely have pictures from before I started keto. Like the few that you see on our website or, or in our video of like why we started keto. I'll leave a link for that over Rachel's head if you haven't seen it. Um, that's pretty much all of the pictures. I didn't allow myself to be photoed. I was behind the camera, not because somebody had to be behind the camera, because I never wanted yeah. to be in front of the camera. I was embarrassed by myself, and even in a group photo, I would like hide all the way in the back. You'd only see my face. I used to hide between behind toss pillows. I was so good at like sitting on a couch for like a family photo or something and being behind toss pillows. Like I really feel like toss pillows were created for family pictures of people that don't want to be pictured. What do you think? Next one. We have Paula. Hey Paula. And uh, Paula said, I'm brand new to this group and I'm loving it. I've been keto two times in the last three years. The rest of the time I lost uh, 75 pounds. Then life happened. I did not have a plan. I fell off keto. My dad had two strokes, was put in a hospice. He was there for 18 days before he passed away. Mm -hmm. I had a job change, which was a good thing, but any change stresses my body. Yeah. My 32 year old niece passed away unexpectedly. My husband has a large cancerous mass on one of his kidneys and oh his kidney gracious. had to be totally removed. The doctor was able to remove it and all he did uh, uh, remove it also he did not have to have any other treatment Good. Uh, my father-in-law was diagnosed with blood cancer put in hospice passed away three days later i realized i was using these incidents as an excuse to not eat right wow. i also realized that i needed to get healthy so that i can be around for my family i gained back 40 pounds before i grabbed a hold and took back my life i've now been keto for two months and have lost 18 pounds wow the top picture uh, below was taking two days or above uh, before I started keto the first time. I am determined to not return to that unhealthy life. I feel so much better, have energy, and a better mental state. Let me take a look at her picture. Oh, wow. Wow. Paula, that is incredible. And thank you for your bravery. That yeah. takes a lot of bravery to say, man, I had all of these bad things happen, but I'm going to look at it and say that was still just an excuse for how I was eating. Like those circumstances were like overwhelming, but they don't have to be connected to what I'm putting in my mouth and chewing. Right. Like though they, they are really difficult seasons of life. And man, we are going to continue to pray for you as like you move forward with this. But Man, I love that connection that she's that she's made, that she stopped for a moment because I'm the same way. A lot of times I'm like, well, if things are going really bad in these areas, that's my permission to stop what I'm doing and, and to, you know, not meet my fitness goals, not meet my health goals, not meet my eating plan. And and it's not true. Right. Okay, let's get into some comments. So this one's for you. Okay. Uh Judith wrote. Hey Judith. Rachel, I have to tell you something very important. Grape Zippiz is the best. <sighs> no. That's terrible. So I she have... Tried, have you tried Fruit Punch? Because uh, Fruit Punch is where it's speaking at. Speaking of Fruit Punch, I had a box of Fruit Punch that I had hidden on the top shelf. You didn't hide it well. Okay, but here's the thing. It wasn't even hidden from me. That box was hidden... So that I could occasionally be an awesome husband. When my oh. wife would say to me, like, I really wish we had some grape, some fruit punch zip fizz. I can be like, I gotcha, baby. And I would climb up on there. I would grab a zip fizz. I'd come down. I never drank it because I'll drink pretty much all the flavors. But she loves her fruit punch. I love fruit punch. So it was the stockpile to protect Rachel for where she doesn't have zip fizzes. And she found it. You'd be so proud. Like, I'm actually glad we don't have a picture to share of me scaling the bookshelf to get on the top of it without a ladder, without a chair, like li literally just ugly climbing. Have you ever ugly climbed on top of your cabinets or stuff to get things? But like, I needed to ugly climb to get to the top to that fruit punch. But like, you are an awesome husband. Appreciate that. And Judith, thank you for taking the purple zip fizz, the grape zip fizz out 
out of the stores. Okay, I see the battery has to be changed on Getting here. Out of there. So we're going to take another commercial break because YouTube's insistent on having a bunch in here. So we're going to tell them to take it now while I change this battery. Okay. There's a lizard in here. There's a lizard in here. We need to evict him. We're just going to let him come on keto on the couch. He could be our guest speaker. No. Did you sign up for him to be at our campsite? Because I don't remember putting him on the list. Okay. Next comment is from Janice. Hey, Janice. And Janice said, hi, I'm now able to watch y'all while using a generator. We still don't have electricity. It's been a week since Hurricane Laura. It's funny and so nice to see y'all. I have to restart my keto because it's been blowed away. Janice, we love you and we are praying for you and your whole family. And we were just so sad to see what was happening as a result of that hurricane. Like, I mean, it has been devastating. People yeah. are without power and it's already like an inconvenient time. Like it's already a time right. where it feels like everything is moving slowly and you get frustrated easily. So. Man, we love you. I'm so glad that you're here. And I just pray that we can bring a smile to your face in yeah. some way, shape, or form. And we, we love you. You are in our hearts and we're thinking and praying for you. We are. Okay, so next comment is from Tara. Hey, Tara. Tara said, definitely keto camping videos. When I first started camping keto, it was really hard to find any videos. I just had to figure out a lot by trial and error. I'd gotten into a bit of a groove with it, but now I'm always open to new ideas. I love Tara. Tara actually is the reason why we have this beautiful oh, that's right. camera. And it's, it won't come up easily because I pinned it down with the amazing metal clips. Metal clips for tablecloths are the way to go. Even if you have to go to Bass Pro Shop or buying it online, I have gotten so many of the Party City plastic tablecloths. Do not buy them. And they're not that expensive anyway. They do not hold the table down like the metal clips. The metal clips are where it's at. Yep. Shanta wrote. Hey, Shanta. I need to find this recipe for chili. Also, I would love a channel on y'all's trips. I have never been camping and maybe one day I will go. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we are going to do another channel. We've already reserved the domain and the name on YouTube. I just Two need crazy to, campers. I need to edit a couple videos. Uh, once we do, it'll be linked down below. That's going to be pretty much just one or two videos a month, maybe, about different camping things, some vlogs, stuff like tips, like things that we found that we like camping, cool purchases, cool like gadgets, that kind of stuff. Also, we're going to be looking for campsites. a yeah, campsites. We're going to be looking for a travel trailer, like a 20 foot travel trailer. So we're planning on going to different RV parks and maybe touring inside. So that'll all be on that channel. But I do want to say, because people are concerned, this channel's not going anywhere. No. So long we as we're doing keto. Bog it down with camping stuff. Yeah. So long That's as we're doing keto, for. we're going to keep this because we're about changing lives. And there's a lot of lives that get changed because of this channel yeah. and because of you guys. So we're going to keep doing four to five videos a week minimum on this channel. We will have some of the camping stuff, like full day of eating, like we're recording some, like a camping it's vlog, going, but it's, it's all like it's what we're food. eating and that kind of stuff. That'll be here. Right. So just keep an eye out for that channel. As far as the chili, uh, we have two chili recipes. One uses keto chow, one doesn't use keto chow. I will leave a link for both of them down below, as well as a link for the video up here. Uh, if you have tomato and basil keto chow, that one is awesome and requires no tomatoes. Yeah, I would also like to see what is your favorite Joe recipe from our website. If you go to twocrazyketos.com, there's all kinds of recipes there. There's dessert stuff. There's appetizer stuff. I mean, we're even making coleslaw. I mean, yeah. so let us know what are your favorite recipes that we've made and share them because if it's an old video, chances are people are looking at recent videos first and they just don't even know about them. I'm proud of us for being able to do this with a computer set up here while we're camping, but there's some delay because everything's hooked up wirelessly to each other. But, but I'm telling you, it is like so different between different campsites because we have way better signal here than we did in Wakiwa Springs. There yeah. was no signal. So Carla wrote, Hey Carla. I went to the beach twice this summer and I've been able to come home not heavier. Oh, it feels amazing. The so old good. me would have been eating all the junk. Yeah, I'm telling you, it is such a victory Talk about a non-scale victory. It really is. I mean, I guess it is a scale victory, but when you come home from a vacation and you're not up in weight, and I'm talking like I never came home from a vacation not 10 pounds up. Right. Ever. Never before keto. Ever. 
Deborah wrote. Hey, Deborah. All caps. She said, Joe and Rachel, how do I know if I'm eating the calories I need? Because I've been in a stall for a long while. I don't know how many calories I'm supposed to have. Please help me. Um, boy, calories is a hard it's thing. A because it depends on... If you're eating the way we're really intended to eat. And I say that because it's not an easy thing. You know, Dr. Barry, he's got a lot of videos on it. And he is much better at this than I am. But he talks about it a lot. You don't need to eat count calories. And Dr. Saiwa says the same thing. You don't need to count calories. If... And this is a big if. It's a big one. You eat the way you're supposed to eat, which is one to two meals a day and only eating whole foods. And right. I, I mean, when I say whole foods, I'm not even talking about like, you know, eating a bunch of fruits or eating a bunch of nuts and seeds. I'm talking about eggs, meat, bacon, eggs, bacon, burgers. You can have some vegetables, steak, some lettuce. Chicken. You can throw some onion in there if you want. You're not going to worry about those carbs. But you're eating, no, I'm not saying eat fruit. I'm not saying eat potatoes. I'm saying green leafy vegetables, maybe a little bit of onion if you're okay with onion, you know, for flavor or that kind of thing. But if you're eating just that stuff, meat and fish and eggs and, and that maybe a touch of cheese if you're okay with dairy, you won't need to count calories. You eat till you're full and you're done. But that means you're done. That doesn't mean two hours later you eat a little more. That doesn't mean you eat three and four and five meals a day. That is one to two meals a day. So that's why I'm saying it's not that easy. It's not. If you are going to eat throughout the day, now we're going to have to get into a little bit of calorie counting because it you're does... You're your insulin every single time that yeah. you eat. Like, so if you're like, I eat three meals a day and two snacks, like every single time you're eating, whether you're eating you're 100 your calorie insulin. or not, or you're eating 500 calories, you're, you're telling your your body to stop burning your fat and to take a break for a minute. Yeah. So like how many breaks are you giving the weight loss process? And the other thing is, is when you're doing that, you are able to overeat because you can eat two or 300 calories and then rest your stomach and then burn that off and then keep going. And then you can eat again and you can, next thing you know, you're going to eat a ton of calories. The reason you don't have to count calories if you're eating Real whole foods, only one to two meals a day, is because your body is not going to allow you to overeat. It's yeah. going to, you're going to get full and you're going to be done. Think about it. Remember the old thing about Chinese food? Well, I eat Chinese food and I'm hungry later. and 20 minutes later, right? That doesn't Carby. happen when you're eating just a bunch of beef. Your body knows we can overeat Oreos easily, right? You There's can no overeat potato chips easily. You're not going to be able to overeat bacon. Try it. Go get cooked two or three pounds of bacon and see if you can eat, eat the whole thing in a sitting. And I'm going to tell you, most likely you won't be able to, but you can easily eat two or three pounds of cookies. I can literally find the, the bottom of a chip bag. It's amazing. And I mean, we get a lot, probably some of our most negative, nasty emails that we get are from people who are really trying to like plate shame us because they see what we eat in like a full day of eating. But and they're like, a lot that's, of times the only meal we're eating. That's too much food. And it's like, no, it's not because we're eating the amount of calories, but it's really just like we eat till we are full in one to two meals a day. Right. And that's why you're able to have what looks like a tremendously hearty serving. And we've started eating a lot of lettuce. Um, it just bulks it up. We like it. We I know like, there is not a tremendous amount of nutrition in the I modern like day lettuce. lettuce too. Um, but we don't even worry about the carbs at night. You look at Dr. Sidewis. He's like, eat your vegetables. Don't worry about it. You're not going to get fat eating a bunch of lettuce. But I'm not eating four meals a day like I was. I right. was I was the three three meal a day and two snacks person. Like, but if you're not eating and you're you know a m multiple times a day and you're keeping a very tight eating window, it's it's good. Now, if you're at a stall, and I know this is a little bit longer segment, but I feel like this is an important it question. Is. Um, if you're at a stall and you've been calorie restricting, especially if you're severe calorie restricting like Rachel was, or even like I was, I mean, there yeah. was a time where I was eating 11, 1200 calories a day. You may have to reverse diet. Reverse diet is adding 25 to 35 to 50 calories a week back on where you're going to be at a stall a little bit longer. Although you may actually start losing weight, even though you're eating more food because your body's like, okay, I've got more I don't energy have coming to in. Store I can everything. expend it. I don't have to store it. But a great way if you want to even get into the reverse dieting is again, 
jumping on the Dr. Barry train and doing what he talks about, whereas just eat one or two meals a day. Like, oh man, try it for a week. Try it for yeah. two weeks. Just eat as much as you consume, can consume in like an hour. Mm -hmm. Just eat and eat and eat. And then don't eat the rest of the day. You're probably going to eat a lot more calories than you were eating before. But now you're going to go 23 hours without eating and your body's going to be able to burn all that off and you'll probably be able to jump start the metabolism that way. I think you definitely will. It's going to take a lot of discipline to tell yourself like, no, it's not time to eat yet. That's the hardest thing for me is to be like, no, it's not time to eat. But when you set those parameters and make sure like ahead of your day, don't decide midway, like when will lunch be today? Don't do that because then your gremlin, like, you know, your ghrelin right. will like try to convince you otherwise. Your body will will try to sabotage you like it really will so don't let your mind decide when are we going to eat you decide in the morning hey i'm eating at two o'clock i'm eating at four o'clock whatever you decide and then that way you can stick to it yeah okay so now we're, we're into a set of comments so we're camping last week we did a video of keto camping fear factor if you haven't seen that video i'm gonna Got leave a link for it one. over rachel's head this one is, I think it's just going to be, is it going to be part of the vlog or is this going to be its own video? I think it should be its own video and I'm smiling because I haven't eaten any yet. I think I will not be smiling when so I eat it. So we did ask for some recommendations for some things to eat. Now, since we are on a camping trip and we're doing this a little bit earlier than we were planning on, these will be recommendations probably for Keto Camping Fear Factor episode three. Oh. So we've got a bunch of recommendations. You ready for them? Okay. Robin said, anchovies, gefilte fish, and halva. Wow. Thank you for suggesting three terrible things. <laughs> I don't know what halva is. I We're suggested gefilte fish, and she said no. Ooh, my, I like picked up some garbage, and my fingernails are super Did you notice dirty. I threw in your purse my fingernail brush? I keep forgetting to get it I out. I did. What is but the name you, of that? It is the Fuller Brush fingernail brush we it, don't sell those products it's we like don't a, sell fuller brush but i my mom gave me one 20 years ago dude that and thing it works. is the greatest fingernail brush ever especially if you're somebody like me who works outside a lot and you get a lot of dirt under your fingernails fuller. and we have two of them both of them the dog have chewed the ends off and i have to order a new one they're about eight bucks here's the thing she i'll leave a link she doesn't destroy them she, they're they're like indestructible. It's just you get tired of cutting your hand on like the teeth marks. Yeah, is basically. I'll what leave it a link is. for and you can sometimes you can find them on Amazon. But if you like a fingernail brush and you want a really good one that's not flimsy and will last, this is the one to use. I'll yeah. leave a link down below. Okay, so back to the recommendations. Gail wrote. Hey, Gail. Canned tuna, canned salmon, and canned mackerel. Ooh. Well, it's, so I there's can. There's a fish theme going. There's out. a seafood theme, and I hate to tell you, but there's a seafood theme with what I've got for this Fear Factor episode, sir. But yeah, Joe's least favorite thing is tuna fish. However, wait, that may not be true because we tasted like the potted meat, and I think in the Vienna sausage, and I think that tuna fish now has a contender for what is the worst canned thing that Joe won't eat. Well, this one's not canned, but Julia recommended pickled pig's feet okay i actually looked for pickled pig's feet because i was trying to not just have a seafood theme and yo those things were ten dollars a jar so i'm gonna have to save up my pennies in order to purchase them i will say that i did find pickled pig's lips at the low low price of three dollars and fifty cents but i just couldn't pull the trigger well, on that one we may still get some pickled pig's, pig's feet into this episode too Pickle because we are right now with hobie sound right hobie sound. which is um but i like how you say it hobie so sound. Hobie. uh hope we're at hobie sound which is near jupiter florida we're about 50 miles away from port st lucie which before we leave we need to take a ride up there to go to gander because I have to return something. Yeah. And there is a really cool pilot gas station for truckers right there. We love trucker gas stations. And so maybe they'll have some pickled pig's feet. So I don't know. One could hope. We're going to go up there either today or tomorrow. We're leaving on Tuesday, but we're halfway there. I don't want to have to go to get What if they just have the house. jar that you have to stick your hand in? That's even better. You know, that's actually really better because of the fact that we only have to eat one. I don't have to buy a big jar of this. Right. But maybe we'll love it. Slow Carb Girl wrote, Hey! Mackerel or herring? Ooh. Both of those seem rough. <laughs> mackerel or herring? 
Kathy wrote. Hey, Kathy. Canned whole chicken. Oh. Jerky and canned salmon. I forgot that they sell an entire chicken bones and everything in cans. It still reminds me of the um, episode of MASH. Well, we're never going to get botulism from it because I'm sure that they have much better canning requirements now post-Korean War. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen them yet. We got to look for that. I still love that show. Do you guys like MASH? If you like MASH, I want to know down in the comments section, what was your favorite episode because there were a lot of good ones a lot of good ones also i'm curious if you know how many spinoffs were there of mash and what were their names leave that down in the comment section i have no idea because i'm a seinfeld girl so if your favorite show was seinfeld like me leave in the comments down below okay. what was your favorite episode seinfeld was good seinfeld. but if you want to go like season or series finale mash still most watched series finale ever. I did not Greatest like. Greatest series finale ever. Seinfeld stunk. I did not like the season finale It was of horrible. I sort of hoped that it meant that they were going to continue the series later on, but they didn't. Let's get back to comments. Jessica wrote. Hey, Jessica. Poor Cox. What is that? I don't know. What is a hawk? I don't know. Is it like a leg part? A pork hawk. I don't know. Okay, so we got a couple comments off of YouTube. Uh, not off of YouTube, off of Facebook. Okay. So Tara put up a thing. Hey, Tara. Of, she bought the same griddle that we have, the 17-inch Blackstone. She Man. wrote, question for Blackstone users. Should my brand new Blackstone have what looks to be rust? This is fresh out of the box. Now, I know it got answered, but I want to answer it because a lot of people are new to cast iron. You're going to get a little bit of rust on here. That's good. If it's just surface rust, you can just wipe it off. A little bit of oil, that's going to take it off. If you get deeper rust, a little bit of like scotch bright or a steel wool, scrub it smooth, then you can like re-season it. If you want to season it, if you have a pot or a pan, rub a little bit of oil, just a little bit, otherwise it's going to get sticky. Turn it upside down over a cookie sheet, put it in your oven, 350 degrees for about an hour. Yeah. And then you can take it out, you can redo, make sure you do the bottom and the handle and everything. But don't, again, don't use too much or it'll get sticky. Blackstone, same thing. If you need to re-season it or if you're getting some of that like little rust on it because it's being exposed to water, it's iron, remember. What you can do is put a little bit of oil on, turn the heat up. You want to get it nice and hot. Just put a little bit of oil, rub it in, let that heat smoke Rubs the it. oil on the grill or else it gets the hose again. Let it come to a smoke. When it stops smoking, do it again and that'll put a nice season. Or... You can just get like three pounds of bacon and cook the bacon on there and then rub that grease in. That helps too. That's the same advice for a lot of my cooking. When the smoke stops, do it again. Now we bought that 17 inch Blackstone for our camping trip. We like ditched the camp grill that everybody uses. We got the 17 inch Blackstone. It can hook up Best to an external propane. money we purchased, like we, we spent. We, it hooks up to the external propane, but it also will hook up to the little one pound canisters. We just don't like those because it's like going it's like to landfills and they're money. expensive and everything else. But for camping wise, and even if you're a single person and like you want one for just, home, it's a good there's no cleanup. Like we're cooking all of our meals on that. And then when we're done, you just scrape everything into the grease trap. Make sure you get rid of it if you have bears and then take a wet paper towel wipe it down you're done the only thing we have to wash is two plates like there's nothing to clean and at the same time we had like shaved meat topped with sauerkraut and cheese we had shrimp we had steak we had hamburger and we had hot dog all cooked at the same time on a 17 inch black on a 17 inch for two people for two people so like if you're just even thinking about getting a blackstone that is the perfect size to onboard because it's really it's going to be under 100 bucks the 17 inch one's like 80 bucks and it's 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 so good like you will never want to cook on your stove again because it's like all of the grease and mess is outside that's right Okay, so Cindy put up a thing. Hey, Cindy. She said, Joe and Rachel, we were going to get the Viking Express tent camper, Ooh. but you've inspired us to a full pop-up. So oh. this morning, this is coming next week. And take a look at that thing. That is oh, awesome looking. My External kitchen. Lord. Look at that. That is a nice, that nice is camper. That is flipping gorgeous. Yeah, we are actually talking about, like, we're going to keep doing this tent camping. But, or not tent camping, but, you know, the pop-up camper. But we are looking to eventually Ooh. 
find when we can find one that's used but well like gently used gently and uh, with all of the features we want a 20 foot travel trailer just something where we don't have to worry about the walls and the canvas because we get so much rain it's here so and I, wet. we stayed dry it poured last night we stayed dry but it's when you go home you know, when you go home and you got to reset it up because it's going to be very humid overnight. Clearly and, our neighbor does not like that. And our neighbor does not like that. So that's what we're going to eventually get into. But something, again, we're mostly, we have to be outside. It's just like literally a bed with a bathroom and a sink so we can do some boondocking and stuff like that. Boondocking. Okay, so Keto Ray wrote, Hey, why would I be at a 0.3 ketones if I was on a 23-hour fast? I did work out an hour before I tested. This has never happened to me. Always worked out fasted, although I don't normally test myself because the workout is in the morning. Makes no sense to me. Don't worry about it too much. Don't worry about it. And here's the thing. I mean, Dr. Barry talks about it. There's no reason to test. I mean, people say, well, this kicked me out of ketosis. That kicked me out of ketosis. It's kind of hard to even know if a product kicks you out of ketosis unless you completely, like, you know, what happens is, is so many things can lower your ketones, but just because your blood ketones are low doesn't mean you're not in ketosis. Ketosis right. is not like how many ketones are in your blood. Ketosis is your body is utilizing ketones for fuel. People like confuse that. But see, that's how these companies like Pruvit and other ketone companies can say things like drink this mixture, these ketones, and you're gonna be in ketosis because technically they're not lying. You're using ketones for fuel, which is what ketosis is. So when you're measuring your ketones, those ketones are just excess ketones that are floating around in your blood. If you have low ones, it doesn't mean you're not in ketosis. You could be just really good at using ketones. Yeah, like my ketones are always low. I mean, I could be 48 hours into a fast and my ketones are going to be like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. My body's really, really good at utilizing them. Also... When you work out, you're going to use more ketones because that's your fuel, especially if you're fasted. And so you've 23 hours fasted, you haven't given your body a bunch, you're working out, so you're using the floating ketones that are in your blood. So of course, your ketone reading is going to be low, but it doesn't mean you're not in ketosis. So Shirley wrote, Hey Shirley. Can someone school me on why the intentional high fat intake? Well, I mean, the fat is your fuel. So it's kind of like, why do you fill up your gas tank in your car all the way to full when all you really need is to be able to get from your gas station to your house or to your work? You fill it up because that is going to give you, you know, more energy for a longer period of time. When you first start keto, you're going to need to eat more fat than once you're fat adapted and been doing keto for a while. Because when you first get started, your body's not used to relying on fat for fuel. It's used to carbohydrates, it's used to sugar and protein to some extent. So now you're eliminating those carbs, the instant energy, and your body needs to learn to use fat. So yeah. fat is going to fill you up, it's going to get you from one meal to the next, and it's when you first start, you're gonna give your body a bunch of fat so it starts going, hey, I'm supposed to be using that. Now once you're keto for a little while, you can actually cut back on that fat and when you look at your macros, the fat is not a goal. You don't need to be like, I need to eat this much fat. That, that's a lever. Eat your protein. The protein is the most important of your three macros. So you want to make sure you're eating at least that much protein. So if you're supposed to be eating 150 grams of protein, you got to eat at least 150. Now, you can eat more. It's not going to kick you out of ketosis. No. Don't listen to people that say, if you eat too much protein, it'll kick you out. It won't. Eat as much protein as you need. Use fat as a lever to give you more fuel to make your food taste good. And then don't eat more than 20 total carbs in your day. That's good advice. Last one. Carly's wrote. Hey, Carly's mama. You both are doing a wonderful job on paying it forward. The experiences mm -hmm. you both share with all of us are so encouraging, whether good or bad. Great suggestions to be the follower struggling with the stall and frustration with it. I think I'm going to follow and increase my calories a bit like y'all mentioned because I think I'm hanging it way too low. I loved hearing the success of Rachel's mom and enjoying the, vaca the eating on vacation with great unplanned results. This lifestyle has such amazing ripple effect on for folks around us. The daily goals is a huge behavioral helper too. Positive reinforcement is so healing. 
Blessings and keto on. Be it clean, dirty, or lazy. Just do it. Wow. Thank you for that. I like that. that ending. I love that too. Yeah. Just do it. Just move forward. Just whatever your goal is, just do it. Don't let anything sidetrack you. You have a goal in mind. Yes, things are going to come up. You're, there's waves that are going to like bump you this week, but just do what you have set out to do this week is, is the plan. And yeah, it's, it's amazing to me. I mean, it's like keto math, right? We talk about God math. Like, wow, this is amazing. Like God has blessed us so abundantly. And like, we're just amazed by it. That's God math. You know, keto math is sometimes you have to eat more to lose weight. And yep. that seems crazy, but you know, we are relearning behavior and some of the bad behavior is I'm supposed to eat a million times a day. I am supposed to eat all low, low calorie food. And I am supposed to eat as little, little bit as possible. And that's the only way if I'm only eating 300 calories a day, then I'm going to lose weight. And it's like, no, right? it's not. Well, that is going to be this week's episode of keto on the couch, keto on the picnic table from a park. Yeah, keto outside. Sorry for the sweat. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and coming along with us on our trip and just spending this little bit of time with us. Uh, Except we, for you, lizard. We You're love, not welcome. We love having this time to just, you know, communicate with you guys and look at your different comments and things like that. Now, make sure you leave some comments and questions down below so that we can read them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Also, make sure you go join our Facebook family group. Now, if you don't have Facebook and you want to share your story with us, you can send that to stories at twocrazyketos.com. Now, if you do like seeing videos like this, there are 77 other Keto on the Couches wow. which you can check out by looking at that playlist right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're going to find right over here. But whether you take a look at this or you take a look at that, don't forget to take a look at this, the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. That way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. We're going to go kayaking. Bye. Bye.